Welcome on into Tums, everybody. My name is Jason Wiley, and I am joined by my host, Cody. Hey, guys. What's up? All right. So we're going to dive into some news, announcements, all that kind of fun housekeeping stuff. So first off, I am going to say if you guys want to support the channel, not only just hit that like and subscribe button, but we do have a Patreon, which I will leave in the description box below. So that way you can come support us. Uh, we're trying to come up with some stretch goals to encourage more of you guys. Uh, so you guys can join us to, for your own personal amusement and to our detriment. Either way. <laughs> Whatever. We're very excited. Totally. <laughs> Yeah, totally, totally. We, we still need to come up with our forms of torture. I, I, I mean, stretch goals. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're actually really excited to do these different things and to make fools of ourselves for other people's entertainment. So I mean, we do that anyways, but now it's going to be even worse. I mean, better. Yeah, <laughs> what he said. <laughs> well, uh, uh, some, some news. Some f uh, news. Uh, I think mine is more in the anime category. So Cody, I'll let you take the fantasy. Because there's yes. really only one one kind of thing that we're just kind of excited about. <laughs> yeah, so Dungeons and Dragons uh, Honor Among Thieves comes out March 31st. I am um, and kind of a cool thing I just found that I was talking to Jason about right beforehand. I am um, if you go to Google and just type in their I am um, like the Dungeons and Dragons and pull it up, it says some of the characters and what their classes are. So for instance, I mean, we already guessed for a decent amount of them, uh, but Chris Pine is labeled as Edgin the Bard. Um, then Michelle Rodriguez is Holga the Barbarian. Hugh Grant is Forge Fitzwilliam the Rogue. And Justice Smith is Simon the Sorcerer. So just a few of the characters and what they are. I, I'm not yeah, going to attempt really cool. to say the paladin's real name because i can't <laughs> i'd butcher it and i don't feel like <laughs> trying right now coming from the man of many languages <laughs> i don't like french <laughs> <laughs> oh actually okay for funny story so megan's been trying to learn how to do a french accent okay and she's just like it's basically whenever there's an r just hakalugi <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so <laughs> French. <laughs> uh, see, anytime I think of a French accent, I think I now start thinking of Jacques the Whipper on TikTok. <laughs> Have you seen him? I don't think so. So he does uh Renaissance fair type things, but he has uh so he he's like holds the record uh, for like most whips in a minute or something like that. <gasps> Oh, the yeah, the whip guy. Okay, okay, yes. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, Jack the Whipper. And so he and he does the different songs to the whips and all that. Uh, but I always yeah. think of the first video I saw of them where he's talking about how this is uh, an adult show and children should not be here. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that clip, uh, but I would highly recommend watching it. Okay. Because, yeah, no, actually I saw one of his videos earlier this week where he was doing the uh, Sephiroth song with the whips. Yes, I saw that one. I am, so, I'm going to pull yeah, it up and I'm going to send this to you because it is amazing. Right. <laughs> Sounds good. But So, other than that, in uh, anime kind of news, uh, so this is actually something cool Viz Media has done. If you go to their YouTube channel, they've actually put all of Death Note uh, I think all of Hunter x Hunter and Inuyasha up on their YouTube channel for free. They got, I think also all of Sailor Moon and at least eight seasons of Naruto on there. And this is all for free. Like you guys can go and watch it. Heck, if you have YouTube premium, boom, you have no ads. Like this, this is something really cool Viz Media has done. Uh, say, and this past week, uh, uh, Love is War released a movie, which was fantastic. It was it was so good. I laughed. I cried. I laughed again. Cried even harder. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, dude, this is this is what makes me such a critic on like a lot of the American shows now is because anime just brings it to a whole nother level. It does. It does really good. Like. Dude, anybody that says like anim anime is like second rate, dude, they they haven't watched a good anime show. Like, 
like they just haven't it's it's in a class of its own and it's a standard i think we need to hold the thrust of like the entertainment industry too but that's my personal opinion Mm-mm. yeah in a lot of ways i do agree with you i especially just the quality and i and the high-end stuff stays high-end and they do a very good job and they do phenomenal with keeping the storylines and the story arcs and everything that's produced is held mm-hmm. to a standard um, and I think in that way, the uh, other media should be held to a standard. It should be held to the much higher standard than it is currently, because we've got a lot of crap lately. <laughs> Rings of Power being one of them. Anyway, <laughs> but then we get like great shows like Legends of Vox Machina. Like there yeah. are gems that go through. And honestly, it's just like, dude, honestly, I really haven't seen a Marvel film since Spider-Man. Like the most recent Spider-Man, just because I, I, I've had no interest in them. Actually, me neither. I uh, oh, I did see Doctor Strange, the uh, madness. Mul- mul- yeah, multiverse madness. Madness. Okay. I am, but as a whole, I can't really think of any of the others. I am excited for Quantum Mania. Okay, and that's actually out this weekend. So if you yes. want to go watch that, go for it. Uh, from what I've already heard so far, is it's suffering from the same thing that Thor Ragnarok has? It's just like the first good chunk, nothing actually happens. It's not until uh, later where things start actually going. but Which is fine with me because oftentimes when nothing's happening, quote unquote, it's building story. Mm-hmm. And I don't mind that. I enjoy getting things put in place that needs to be there. Okay. Well, we'll have you go watch it and come back and tell us how it was. <laughs> I will do my best. I don't know if I'll have time, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to life. Welcome to adult life. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here too long. The <laughs> uh, preaching to uh, the choirs here. I know, right? Uh, so with that, I think we got all of our news. We got promos. Uh, other thing, just to rehash the Patreon thing. If you introduce at any level, you get access to our Discord. We'll we will do updates for episodes like that's where actually you'll get notified first is on our discord when an episode goes live. So it's kind of really cool if you just want to stay up to date on anything that is tomes. Mm-hmm. You're here. All right. So with that, let's dive on in. So this week is our first book club meeting. <laughs> yes. And it is a chonkers book. Yes, so... but it's good. It is a good book so far. It is. I um, so yeah, the book that we're starting with is called The Shadow of What Was Lost. Yeah, The Shadow of What Was Lost. Of what was lost. <laughs> Dude, I swear, so, like okay, going way back into anime. Dude, some of these anime titles are ridiculous. And I feel like this is where it got <laughs> where it's doing it too. <laughs> That's fair. The shadow of what was lost. The... I mean <laughs> when we were growing up, we had things like Brisinger, Aragon. We had that type of thing. Aragon, Bleach, Naruto, One Piece. <laughs> and now it's the shadow of what was lost. Is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? <laughs> oh, dude. Okay. Okay. I- I'm going to look one up here. Long anime names. Oh, because I remember one of them was. Okay. I actually never. The... One of the shorter ones is. Is it wrong to pick up a girl in a dungeon? Uh, let me go to the number one, just because I just want to get the, like, the lengthiest one. Do it. The story in which I was kidnapped by a young lady's school to be a sample of the common people. <laughs> <laughs> it's got quotation marks. To be a sample of the common people, end quote. <laughs> I, I feel like that could have been said more succinctly. <laughs> I think you can just do the sample of the common. Like or common sample, like dude. Yeah. Some of these Samples tiles of are common people would be so that that would have fit. Yes, it would. Perfect. Yes, it would have. Ah, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it is a good book. Uh, it is a good book. Well, the first few chapters. Yeah. We're only at. We just finished chapter three. That's where we'll. That's all we read for this time. Um, but it's yeah. by James Islington. Yeah, I believe that he's Australian. Mm-hmm. I believe so. So, but, yeah, part of the reason why I was interested in this book is because if you read on the titles, like from Barnes and Noble, is just it p- pays homage to it being similar to the Wheel of Time. 
And as I started it, I was like, okay, I can kind of see the correlation a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I might have some opinions on that side of it, but going with the story of this, the story overall is intriguing. It's, I thought one of the most interesting things it does is the way it starts. I like how it actually starts with him at the Academy. Okay. It immediately starts in there. Yes, I agree. Where we're followed Davian. Whereas like, okay, we go to Stormlight Archives. We go to uh, King Killer Chronicles. Chronicles. It's them. It's their journey to get to the Academy or even Harry Potter. Their journey to get to Hogwarts. It's not like Harry woke up in the Gryffindor common room. <laughs> yeah. And I really enjoy that. And I like already we've had backstory to previous things that have happened. I, mm-hmm. but it, they didn't feel it necessary to go through and state this happened and this happened chronologically. It's mm-hmm. these things are happening and they reference back to them. They go, yeah, this happened, but and then we keep going. And um, yeah, I definitely enjoy that aspect of it as well. I am. Um, what did you think of the prologue? Prologue. I found interesting. Like it is very, like it helps kind of set the stage. Like for me, in my mind's eye, it really helped it set a like a high fantasy stage. It did. I um, I felt like it was very cinematic as well. Yes. I um, it was very cliched in that way, not negative, <laughs> but it yeah. was very cliche in how it did it. I um, mm-hmm. and it's the things you come to expect, but it was still good. Correct. Like this is where going into tropes and going into cliches when you do it right is a good thing. Because yeah. again, a, a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's already been done like a hundred times." I don't. I'm not. I'm going to be a hipster and do something my own. When there's a reason why it works. Yes, and it's because, especially like to all the high fantasy community, it's something they know. So immediately by doing that, it's just like, ah, I'm going back onto a trail, that, at least the starting point that I know and I'm familiar with, as I'm about to embark on a new journey. Yeah. Ooh, that's like a good quote. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing you're recording this. You can go back and add it into your story. <laughs> oh, yeah. And actually, in the Discord, I can use it as a quote. I can do it like as a quote. <laughs> do it. Definitely. Um, so, okay. So, something so, that bugs yeah. me. It starts in the prologue. Okay. It starts with the first sentence or the first word in the first sentence and the last word in the first sentence. And a few other places, he will just say a single word. Yes. And that's so it. So this Some is moments where. moments are good. For instance, the mm-hmm. first one, contrary, lightning. You instantly, you have the entire picture. It's not showing, it's not telling, it's showing. It's All showing. he said it was it's lightning just and you have this full thing. That one was great, but he does it a little too much for my taste. I am. Yeah, this is where his overall writing style is good. It's not amazing. Like, no. like again, looking at Patrick Rothfuss, his writing style, it is that of a poet. Yes, he, he is going through. Prose. Disc- yes, say so he goes through and adds those details. Sanderson goes through and sets the scene, does it his own way. Let's say he. Uh, I feel like he is doing it his own way. It's just like, it's very much like, I'm going to say not quite fully flushed out yet, Mm -hmm. but overall writing style. It's like, he's finding his voice. He's finding his groove. And so that's where I'm like, it feels a little clunky. Does So this run right here is the one that bugged me. This one said, this is the, so I'll read this thing. It's very short, but I am, where is it? He stepped backwards over the edge, fell. Yeah, that a, a comma would work. Well, it's not just that; it's saying "fell." I understand that he's evoking the imagery of it, mm-hmm. but there's other ways to do that, and I just I yeah. don't I didn't care for this way. Um, I did have to throw in a gripe at the beginning just because this is pretty much my only gripe, and it's yeah, right seriously. There no, and, and that's the thing that that's why it's like his overall writing style, I feel like 
it's beginning to start. He's beginning to find his voice, find his groove, try to find what works and what doesn't work. I'll say like that example doesn't work, but the lightning that worked. Yes, it does. So that's where I'm just like, I feel like for him, he is just has like a general lack of some of the descriptions, Mm -hmm. like some of the characters, like he introduces the character, but really doesn't describe them. Yeah. I still can't picture what the main character looks like. And I constantly forget that his face has a scar on it. Oh, it does. I didn't even know that. (laughs) Exactly. Which, and that's the thing is just having kind of that character description. Don't get it wrong. People will forget after, after reading it. But even as he meets, uh, like, as we meet Liam, uh, Liam, however he pronounces it, it's the character they put in the chair in the first chapter. Yes. <laughs> uh, we really don't get any description of him, which this is where it can be a good thing and a bad thing. Because here are the two camps that I see it as, is by not doing it allows us to create the character in our mind's eye. Yes. But at least having more of a physical description, like, oh, he he has a hawkish note. Like, honestly, okay. So that's one thing that Sanderson does that lets me know when I have found Hoyd. <laughs> <laughs> Is when he's got, like, the el- whenever I hear elongated features or a hooked, like, facial yeah. feature, I'm just like, okay, that's Hoyd. I know who that is. So, but the one reason why I'm actually going to disagree with you on why I actually like that he's doing this is this is contrary to the cliche. This is Mm. something you always have that synopsis, like that point where the character is described. Well, he's taking his time and building the character's description over time. Okay. So for instance, and it's not, it's, there's no exposition. This book doesn't have exposition in it. Mm -hmm. and and that's one of the pros and this is one of those things this is one of those things that he doesn't do an exposition on but if you so i can jump to chapter three uh basically when he's surrounded by all those other boys Mm -hmm. that they're gonna i beat him they reference that he has a scar on his face and they're like oh well uh, like it looks like you know how to fight typically you guys don't know how to fight and Mm, okay it brings a whole thing into it and then it, right after that, it references back to how he got that scar. Okay. And that's when he's walking with the elder. And yeah, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> at the right the, yeah, one of the... I keep on saying one of the Arcanists, but wrong, I wrong, know. wrong series. <laughs> I know. The, the, one of the teachers. The blessed? Gifted. Gifted. Yeah. One of the gifted like teachers, yeah. But... So, yeah. But yeah, again, and that's one of the major pros he does is he is showing he's not, there really is an exposition there. And that's, and that's one of the things that this is where it's, it's doing fantastic. I agree. hundred percent. And for me where I'm getting like, okay, this is a familiar vibe with them, with the stigma associated with the gifted. Mm-hmm. Where they're not trusted, where they're like, okay, we have to basically bound you by Oh, what what what's the thing that they the have tenants. to bound them by? The tenants. Yeah, they, we have to bound you, literally. Yes. Which get which brings me back to Wheel of Time, because the male half of the one true power is corrupted. Yeah. To where they're like, yeah, we don't trust we don't trust people that can use the one true power. That's yeah. God's power. <laughs> that, that's like basically the belief behind it. So that's where for me I'm sensing some of that similarity. But it's taken it in a different way, which really is what is making this stand out in the best ways possible. Yeah. So one of the things I love is, again, it's that it goes back to the no exposition. But instantly, it ta- you know that this group of the gifted, they lost a war mm-hmm. instantly. They're subject to these other people. They're bound. And I'm one of the first characters that you meet is stripped of his powers because he disobeyed the law and he didn't go out chained. Uh, it's things like that where you can like, wow, these people who are so powerful are limited. And my, when I first read in that, I'm like, okay, so it's either a self-imposed thing or they lost. And if they lost, how did they lose? And then it gets to later. And as the story goes, they just reference little things here and there 
we didn't know that they could limit our powers, that they had traps set up for us. We didn't know that they had mm-hmm. these things. And it's like, what? And you could see it. You can picture this group who's so superior and powerful and suddenly people have things that can stop them and they just stand there on not, not sure what to do and just get massacred. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, actually I was going to just chime in and say, this is where we're learning with the character. Yeah. Like, because he even says to the guy he's writing with, uh, Davian says to him, just like, they won't tell us what happened. Yeah. It's like, I've asked professor after professor and they've, they've told me nothing. And he's, and he's just like, I wonder why. Okay. He's just like, because if we forget, if we don't talk about it, we're not going to learn from our past. And so that's, and the way he's doing it, this is where, again, it's in every respect, it is exposition, but it's doing it in a way that it's, it's educational for the character and us, the audience. Yes. So when I say exposition, I mean, the oh, author yeah. interjecting into the story i am or and explaining yeah. yes and sometimes they do that through a character i am but it's lengthy and it's obvious in this it's a conversation this is dialogue mm-hmm. between two people trying to figure things out and yeah. that's where it's not exposition to me it's dialogue it's dialogue and that's where this is where it's done perfectly like yes. This is where it is truly done well. And that's what really, and again, the fact that when we're going through we're like, okay, now what is the story? Like, what are some of these weapons? Why are this? Why are that? When the story gets you asking questions about it, that's a good sign because the book has got you into it saying, now you're curious and you want to know. And so you're going to keep reading so you can learn. Because yeah. now I'm curious what, what his, what the trials are. What is so scary about this trial? <laughs> well, the scary thing with the trial, if you remember, is yeah, that if he, he fails, well, it's not just that, but he can't access his powers. Mm-hmm. And so he's freaking out because if he can't simply light a candle on fire, <laughs> he'll be kicked out and he'll be stripped. Yeah, he's going to. I, I can't remember the term. I need to start like writing these terms down. <laughs> I know. I think they call it stripping them of his powers. Yeah, but I think that but the when they when that happens, the person who they are, they I believe they oh, have they a become name a shadow. Shadow, that's what it is. Yeah. Hence yeah. the shadow of what was lost. Mm, we're already seeing the title come in here. <laughs> I mean it's either that or it's the shadow at the beginning. Ooh. I have theories sure. already. We are three chapters yeah, I, in. I'm already have theories. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, I just got one too. It's just like the shadow of what was lost. It might have been the one of the first shadows. He could be. And the entire thing is he's false. Because, mm-hmm. uh, oh, yeah, no, no. Oh, the augers. He might be one of the augers. Actually, I believe that's what it is. It says in the summer. He might, I think he might be one of the augers. Well, the main character is. Yeah. That, that was what I was trying to reference. Okay. I was meaning the evil, the big, bad, evil. Oh, oh yeah. The big, big, bad, evil guy. Yeah. BBEG. Yep. The BBEG. Oh, um, yeah. No, that, that would, that would make sense. Because the next book is the shadow of what is to come. Okay. An echo of things to come. An echo of things to come. Sorry. It says it on the back. <laughs> I don't have the book in front of me. <laughs> Why not? Because it's in the other room. <laughs> and I'm lazy. <laughs> no. Anytime that we talk about books, I'm, if I can, like, I have it in front of me. And this is a habit I got into with school as well with my Russian literature class. I literally have yeah. it and I start like rereading things as I go so I can remember everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good idea. I just got maybe a page of notes, <laughs> which we've nice. already talked about all of them. <laughs> I am. I have so many more things. So, what did you think of the process of stripping, of the turning them into a shadow? I find it interesting. Like it is, and even the way that is written, it's written pretty well. It is. Like this is where again, I think if he did do at least go into a little bit more detail in describing sceneries such as that, mm-hmm. I think that would help go a long way. Like there is a difference between like soft like. 
big and fluffy, uh, stupid, that that's not needed, to at least describing what he's seeing, describing what uh, Davian is feeling during all of it. Just having that lets us really get into the character. I or agree. At least give us that link. You know, the part that stood out the most for me is mm-hmm. uh, this one line. I am um, so it's right as like the worst part of it's happening. Um, I am so he says the ugly black veins crawling across his face, leaching the color from his skin, a disfigurement that would be with Liam for the rest of his life. And so it goes to show not just because at first when I was hearing that they're like this guy broke the thing, I was like, okay, either they're going to kill him or they're going to strip him of his powers. Figure it's going to be one of those two things. Strip him of powers. Okay. But why is this such a big deal? What's the negative result from it? And Mm -hmm. then seeing what it does and then a disfigurement. Okay. So it's obvious who these shadows are. Yeah, and then to see an example of that already later on, and that someone who's already despised as being gifted is nothing compared to the despise of someone who's a shadow. Um, then already here, oh, there's all these rumors about shadows. They're delving into dark things, and some of it probably lies. Not all, but just really interesting yeah and that's actually what where this is where i'm seeing the parallel between this and will time because whenever they do find a male channeler so a man who can channel the one power they strip him Mm -hmm. of his power Uh, i'm trying to remember what they call it but the entire process basically what happens is they're now like devoid of purpose in life like they get suicidal Okay. Like, and so actually, the ice that I have to keep an eye on those who have been cut off from the one true power to make sure they don't go and uh, off themselves. (laughs) Mm -hmm. No, it makes sense. But this is where, again, this is this is one of the things I love with like good magic systems is where there is a there are straight powerful pros that could tilt it one way, but then there's the offset. Yeah. And it's the consequences that make stories fun. <laughs> hmm. But so overall, thought. Okay. Let's do that. I think so when he's reading books, only one title is given. I think it's okay. gonna be an important title. Hmm. Principles of Draw and Regeneration. Ah. Go back to the prologue. Obviously, this is not the same word, but similar. The Waters of Renewal. So, again, I have a theory, but what's your theory? Since you're the one found that you get first crack. Okay. So, I think that the... So I'm going back to other books and things and point from that, that they're they're drawing from a well, essentially, in this. Um the well is gonna be related to water in those ways. I mm-hmm. um, they've already seen that where the I'm um, talking about the water and the introductory portion in the prologue. I yeah. am. Um, but I think that he's going to be able to pull from his well in ways that are different than others because he's hmm. an auger i am um, and speculated at this point in the book but he's an auger yeah. and i think part of that is i don't know so it's talking about i think the book actually is talking about how to draw on the power and re- like regenerate your power i hmm. um, but i don't know i just feel like there's a tie there i'm not sure exactly what though and say, so, and my theory is, uh, this is where we need to learn more about the magic systems before we can actually draw like any real conclusions. Yeah. And say, so, and so that's where my theory is. He 
him being an auger, what I think might happen is he could be stripped. Whether that happens, I don't think it's going to happen in the beginning. I think it's going to happen middle towards the end. Okay. Where that becomes what he has to do and try to find. Or or maybe it happens at the beginning and that's what he has to do is he tries to find a way to undo becoming a shadow. Mm-hmm. And by cool. searching through the lost, like finding lost knowledge, that kind of stuff. And that's where the prologue could come in is like there is the waters of regeneration where he can go bathe into it and then be reconnected to his power. Oh, I'd like that. I wonder also if he is stripped, but he's not stripped of the auger powers. He's stripped Ooh. of just the gift. Okay. Because, yeah, didn't the uh, professor say that they didn't use the gifts, the augers? So the to do readings and to see the future, they didn't use the, the gift. Yeah, they called it something else. There's another name for it. The essence. Essence. They don't draw from the essence. Essence. They um, they did. It was some other way, and but they did have like they could use the essence because they talked about how a guy lied to them and then tried to run, and before guards could do anything, the augers wrapped him in essence and then just like wiped him out. Okay, so but it very much seems like the augers' powers and the gifted powers they're like two different categories yeah okay so what so again the essence could be the hard magic system whereas the august power is more the soft i think so uh, okay that, okay we're on the same page then <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah no this is we're only three chapters in and it ends off with uh the teacher saying just like all right so you excited for your exam tomorrow he's like that's not for another two weeks oh buddy <laughs> they didn't tell you <laughs> like no, <laughs> it's tomorrow. What? <laughs> yep. Good luck. May the force be with you. May the odds be ever in your favor. Dude, I feel, you know, I feel like that is true teacher fashion. They they sped up the test timetable without telling anybody. I know, right? right? Dude, I feel like, I feel like that's the reason why I felt so many classes. It's like they went one day, it's like, all right, quiz time. I'm like, when was this announced? <laughs> Yep. Oh, last night we sent an email out. Did you not get it? I didn't check my email. I was busy working. <laughs> Why did it come in at 2.30 in the morning? I don't know. I was bored. Uh, I was bored. <laughs> Wanted to see you guys sweat. <laughs> but yes, um, overall impressions, though, for the first three chapters and prologue, as a whole, I enjoy it. I think that's going to be a great story. I think there's a lot of potential here and I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited too. Cause it leaves me wanting to read more. Like I had to hold back this way. Cause I'm like, I want to keep reading. I want, I do want to keep reading. <laughs> yeah. but, which is also, I getting that feeling from both Dune and this now, where it's just like, Dune, I want to keep reading this. I want to keep reading. I want to read both the books <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <sighs> That'd be something. <laughs> Yeah, that, that I can really just picture be. you a book in each hand, just do, 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 do. <laughs> and I'm just chanting. That would be funny. <laughs> and I'm sitting there just in robes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I think... Oh, and what, so, yeah. any other impressions or thoughts? Uh, in fact, okay, this this weren't maybe we should push it more than just forty pages so we get more to talk about, but <laughs> just realistically, I'm thinking that that's reasonable for us. <laughs> yeah, especially with my workload right now. <laughs> yeah, your workload, like, dude, you and yours. Freak. Yeah, mine's mine's like slowly increasing. For again, I'm, I'm I just read at night, so or. Or more accurately, when I'm uploading and rendering stuff for work. So, fair enough. Well, let's let's see here. If we can make it to chapter ten, how many pages is that? That's to page one hundred and seven. So sixty pages. Yeah. So it's it's twenty pages more. Twenty pages more. Okay. Yep. Yep. Let's do chapter ten. Let me go to our document. Uh oh wait that's that's something else. 
wait, why did I write? Oh yeah, I remember why I wrote that down there. Never mind. Uh, schedule. Okay. So just to give you a little teaser, I decided to read the last sentence of chapter nine. You ready for this? Okay, hit me with it. She stayed that way, motionless, until the shadows found her. Oh, why? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> what page? What page number does that? Well, oh, one hundred and six. Sorry, one hundred and six is the last page of chapter nine. So, one hundred and seven is chapter ten. Okay, one hundred six. Okay. And that is twenty more pages. So. Yeah, so it's thirty-eight is where we're currently at. So thirty-eight to one hundred and six. Math is not wanting to work for me. <laughs> Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Okay. Okay. We'll see how that one goes. Yeah, that yeah. bumps us from five percent to fifteen <laughs> percent. So, and we can see. And if that's yeah. too much, I mean, then then we can cut it back. Yeah. This is where we're still new because Cody, I don't know about you, but I've never been in a book club. How about you? <laughs> I'm not really. Okay, we're on the same page then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did. Uh, what was it called? Back in middle school, we had a like it was a competition. It was like Battle of the Books. Um, oh, okay, yeah, I know. My middle school does something similar. Yeah, so that's the closest thing that I've done. Yeah, it's never like one's like, okay, we're going to read a book and then we're going to discuss the book. <laughs> okay, well, that's my entire Russian literature class. So, yes, I'm in a book club right now. <laughs> and we read a book a day. <laughs> oh, dude. Actually, I finished three books this week. So, yeah. I finished Rhythm of War. Uh, then I finished like a couple of short stories, but yeah. Nice. And my. Uh, research for freaking uh, the Cosmere video I'm going to be making here in a yeah. little bit. Like, yeah, actually probably it might be around uh, yeah, around March 10th when it finally gets released. If not, probably the 24th. Okay. So, but anyway, yeah, no, well, this is going to be a shorter episode, so this one I hope is more digestible for all of our viewers. <laughs> Enjoy. We love you guys. And and if you guys want to join in on the book club too, you can get the book as well, The Shadow of What Was Lost. Uh, you can pick it up at Barnes & Noble. I'm pretty sure or if you're more of an audiobook listener, I don't know how the audiobook is. You can listen to it. Uh, and yeah, we're going to next time, we're going to read up to chapter 10. So if you wish yes. to join in on that, hit us up on the Patreon. So that way you can join in on the Discord and we can have a conversation about that. I'd love to hear from you. Yep, and if you guys want to meme us, go go for it. Well, we like the memes too. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, guys. I guess we'll put a bookmark in for now, and we'll pick up the book in a couple weeks. Why not? All right, guys. Have a good one. <laughs>